Today I'm going to share with you my technique for collaging with cold wax as an adhesive. Later this week, I will put the second layer on this collage, which will be the colored cold wax that will be my paint medium. So stay tuned. Here we go. I'm playing with the Gamblin cold wax again today. I've been researching and watching videos and I think I have a better handle on what I want to make this medium do for me. So I'm going to do a collage today. Um, this will probably take two or three, hopefully just two videos to get to the end result just because I think I'm going to need to let this first collage layer dry for at least overnight um, before I can go on with another layer. So this is where I'm at so far. I've pulled out some papers and my inspiration was this mulberry paper that has just leaves and little sprigs. I just I thought it was really pretty and that's where I started and then I just started going through my paper stash and pulled out other elements that I thought would coordinate and complement with that really well. This is a Seven Gypsies Architectures piece and it can be pulled off of this backing. You can see that. But because the backing is a really great color with that mulberry paper, I think I'm going to just leave it on there and then I'll cold wax around the edges just to obscure those a little bit so it's not quite so square and sharp. But I just have a book spine and some old paper and some rusty cheesecloth, a couple of papers that I tea dyed, a tag, just various things. So I did take a picture because I'm going to have to move it. And then, I mean, I have to move all the elements and then put them all back down again one at a time. So I will have a picture to go by. I also have this wool. It's just like a th thin, unevenly woven yarn. But the color was great with the cheesecloth. So I'm going to put that aside and show you my substrate. I have never used these before. A local craft and art store in my area was recently purchased by Michaels. It's a family owned, you probably have heard Doris or Consumer Crafts. They're out of Strongsville, Ohio. And I have bought for them, brought, bought from them since the early 80s when I first started painting. So I was kind of sad that they are no longer going to be called Pat Catans. Um, I'm, they're not quite sure whether Michaels is just going to close our store or turn it into a Michaels. Either way, it makes me sad. But they're, we're having a great big sale and getting rid of a lot of things. And these Canva art boards, they come on a block, kind of like a watercolor block would be. So they're all glued in along this top edge. And you can, they're intended, I guess, for the whole works to go out into the field for plein air painting. Um, which I don't do. So you just take a razor blade or a craft knife and go underneath the adhesive and you can just take one off, which is what I did. But it has a nice texture. I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up or not. And it's a nice size. The only drawback, the price was good, <laughs> but the only drawback is there. it's a little bit warped. Just slightly warped, but I think we can probably bend it back into shape, which I will do before I start so I don't end up with a warped piece of art. But anyways, that's my substrate. That's what I'm going to start with. So I'm going to get everything off of that artboard and laid out somewhere else. And then I'll be back and we'll start putting this down. I'm going to use the cold wax as the adhesive. 
to put the elements down on the board. Okay, I'm ready to put my base layer down and I've decided to tear up the rest of this piece of mulberry paper and use it as my first base layer just because if you can see that easier to see with white underneath it, but right there it has actual plant material in it and I just think that's really cool. So anyways, and then this is the cold wax. It's just, it looks like Crisco, like shortening. So very soft, very pliable. So I'm just going to spread it on and put my papers on. layer of wax on top. And just get all the edges down and all the bubbles out just as if you were using glue but we're using wax. You can smooth it totally out, or you can leave some wax that's not smoothed out for texture. It will dry with the texture in the wax, just like oil paint would. It's actually a medium that's made to be used mixed with oil paint. So we have some water mixable oils coming that I will be anxious to try with this. I really didn't want to, I have so many supplies, I really didn't want to get into a whole new line of paint, as in oil paint and all that goes along with that. Just like I didn't want to get into the whole um, encaustic rigmarole with the heat and the melted wax and all of that. So we're going for alternatives here. And you can use a bowl scraper. It works really well to smooth things out. It's also great for applying wax that's mixed with paint to get a nice thin transparent layer. I'm really hoping that you can see those little dark speckles there. It's coming off of the little pieces of plants that's embedded in this paper. I also like to use this silicone spatula to smooth the wax out. That works really well. You get a nice thin coating. A nice thin layer. And see how much came up. Just by going back over it and smoothing it back out again. Oh, I lost my little piece there. Let's get that in there. Stay in there, little plant. It'll probably get covered up anyway, but We'll start with it. Now I'm by no means an expert with this. This is just the second piece that I have done with this cold wax. And the first one was a total experiment. There's a, another video with that. And basically I was just playing with different colorants to see what I liked to use to color the wax with. The 
edges of this mulberry paper literally disappear when I put the wax on top. Trying to be careful of the little pieces of plants in there so I don't obliterate them. Trying to put more wax on top so they're embedded. remain movable also with the wax like I could pick any one of these up and move it until the wax starts to set up which takes a couple of hours so you do have some wiggle room as far as that goes which is nice unlike glues and adhesives in traditional collage. And once that stuff sticks, you're done. It's staying there. Or you're making a mess. Or starting over. See how that mulberry paper basically just melts into the other paper behind it. Love. I love it. I got it from Amazon. It wasn't. I think it was one of those Chinese companies. And when I order from one of those, and I've had good luck with almost everything I've bought from a non-name brand company through Amazon. I just make sure I use Prime when I buy it. Make sure it's a <clears throat> an item that is on Prime. That way if I don't get it or it comes and it's damaged, Amazon's really good about fixing things for you. But I really like this. It was a whole package. I think there were maybe eight different sheets in the package, different colors and textures. I was happy with it and I bought it primarily for this. So This paper is fairly thick as a piece of packaging from that bicycle architecture piece. The packaging matched the background that was behind that bicycle, so I decided to use a piece here to pull that together, use it in more than one spot. Use a brayer to push the papers into the wax. I figured I have enough tools covered in wax today. I don't need to break out the brayer too. So, but that's also handy to use. I'm just using some of that wax that's already there 
to go over the top of this piece of paper. As everything's getting pretty waxy at this point. All right. Trying hard to keep this in frame for you guys. This Tim Holtz craft mat was also another purchase I made at the pack of tan sale. I got it for 20 bucks. Score. But I think that's going to help me keep things in frame. So if you know, watched my videos, you know I have trouble with that from time to time. I'll look and then we'll be like, okay, you haven't seen anything I've done for the last 10 minutes. Not good. Yes, it's, it was a magazine page that I tea dyed and it's quite a wavy piece of paper buckly. I don't know how hard this is going to be to get it to stay down in that wax. It might not work. Which will make me sad because I really want it on here. I think we can coax it on right there. Just like the paper was bubbled before I ever tried to put it down on the board. Now, a little texture, right? As long as it doesn't come back up, which I don't think it will. The edges are down really well. We may have to live with that bubble in there because it's actually in the paper now. for a minute see what it does so to this bike if I take it off I may not get it back on again but I want to see whether I like it better with or without the backing. I know that's not where it belongs, but I, th I, I think without. We can use little pieces of that backing other places. And it does have adhesive on the back. And I know the wax is going to stick like, oh no, it's doing good. I thought it was going to like really build up in between those little pieces, the spokes and everywhere, but not too bad at all. love it when I find antique children's books, storybooks or whatever, because they often have songs in them. And then you not only get the illustrations and the text from the pages, but also oftentimes you get music. Almost done with the collage layers. Almost. This just a piece of old book spine. I love the stringy bits. Let me 
cheesecloth. I just shredded it apart because I like the stringiness, the textural quality of it. I'm running out of wax and I'm almost done. So we'll leave some of that texture and then just push some wax into spots to hold it down. Just like that. And I'm just not sure where I had that. I'll have to look at the picture. Well, I'm going to get more wax because I need to put more cheesecloth down. And the wax is not real expensive, in case you were wondering. This is a 16, yeah, 16 ounce can. This is the second time I've used it, and you can see it. I haven't had to use that much of it. And I think it was less than $20, so not too bad. And if you're new to my channel, this is cheesecloth that I rusted along with some papers and other things. And I do have a video on that process if you want to rust some cheesecloth for your art. I really, really like using it. I love the color and the texture that it gives. I've used it in quite a few of my painting projects that I've done videos on just because I like it a lot. Okay, and then I have this tag, but I think I, I need to do something on it before I glue that down, so we'll save that. And the only other thing I have left is this sticker quote. I cut it from a Jane Davenport packet of these little sheets. Also a Pacatan slash Michaels on sale bit that I picked up. So it was unexpected. I didn't think I would be going to be able to see through that. I kind of like that. I'm not too concerned if any of these edges might be a bit loose because. The second layer is going to be wax and color, and pretty much everything's going to get touched again. So, maybe this needs to be there. This is the lost piece. I'm not sure where it was to begin with. I'll put it here. Not that it has to be there, but why not, right? It's sitting right here. They may very well end up covered up anyway. And then I have another little piece. Um, no. There. Sometimes you just have to wait till your eye tells you that that's the spot. Okay, that's, oh, I have this eight also, and I am pretty sure that this wax will hold it once it starts to set up, so I'm just going to put a generous amount on the back. I wish you guys were here to tell me where to put this. I'm going to put it right there. Kind of close to where I had it before, I'm sure. It does feel like it's going to stay in place, so I'm going to leave it alone. 
and other than the little tag, which I will do something on, the first layer is done. Oh, forgot about the string. I do want some of this on here. Move that before it gets wax on it and we won't be able to paint it. So I'm going to just wrap this to the back. I think I want two pieces of it. wax on here to make it stick or at least get it in there temporarily until I can get more wax on top of it. So coming to the end here, um, like I say, this is going to need to set up before I, I mean, I could immediately go with some paint layers now if I want to, but I prefer to let it at least set up overnight before I add the next layer, just because I'm not real experienced with it, and I don't want to mess up what I've already accomplished here. So, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you will be notified of when I do part two of this and finish this finish this video up with the color layers and we'll talk some more about how to use the cold wax. I have some water soluble oil paint coming. You can use oil paint. It's formulated for oil paint or intended to use be used with oil paint. You can use water mixable. Shouldn't have said water soluble. Water mixable oil paints, which is kind of a misnomer because you don't really mix oil the water mixable oil paints with water. They are oil paints. Um, the advantage is that they clean up with soap and water. You don't have to use any caustic solvents or anything for your cleanup. So I just got a very small set. I can mix colors with those. So hopefully that will be here maybe too in time to play with on this. If not, we'll do a different one. And I have some Gamsol coming. Gamsol, if you're not familiar, is an oil painting solvent. Once I get color on this, I can put Gamsol in a little... Um, applicator bottle, like a fine liner bottle, and um, just scribble some Gamsol over it and wait a couple minutes and wipe it off and it creates a really cool effect. So you'll see that also because I fully intend to do that. But for now, we've come to the end as far as I can take this. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this cold wax collage video. And if you did, share it with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. That all helps my channel way more than you know. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye.